today we are going to exercise some uh, surgical techniques on this printed 3D model to illustrate how uh, real-life surgical techniques can be used on this model and how the trialing of these techniques on the model can help us to streamline and render our operating more effective and less time consuming. So, um, we are today um, trying to illustrate how a surgeon can look at this uh, 3D model and uh, try to uh, carry on a morphological assessment of the heart. We will try and perhaps identify the diagnosis and then we will proceed to uh, try and, uh, uh, if not repair the specific lesion today, but illustrate how some of the surgical techniques that are normally used in theater during a cardiac operation can be used in the same way to train that operation on the model itself. This model has been printed in a specific material that uh, uh, maintains the shape and is able to hold the surgical uh, stitches, whereas uh, at the same time offers enough degree of uh, uh, softness and flexibility for the surgeon to be able to inspect the heart inside and out. So if we look at this uh, uh, model, we can uh, already see from the outside the top of the uh, aorta, uh, the main vessel from this uh, pumping chamber, the ventricle, is missing, but that is because the uh, specific model was cut at that point. Uh, that offers us the possibility to repair this uh, vessel and illustrate how vascular repair can be also done on the model, not only cardiac repairs. This model has been prepared in such a way that we can uh, remove the anterior wall of the right ventricle. And there's something that we can notice about the anterior wall of the right ventricle, which is its thickness. That would be consistent with the diagnosis that uh, this uh, patient already has uh, had. Moving on to the left side of the uh, ventricular mass, we can remove the free wall of the left ventricle, uh, which again displays some of the characteristics of the uh, morphological left ventricle um, by displaying a finer trabeculation when compared to the trabeculation which are coarser of the right ventricle. Uh, in this sense, uh, the model although it might not be as precise as a anatomical human specimen, provides enough information to make some uh, observations about the uh, anatomy of the heart. At the top, we can see a main aortic trunk. This is easily recognizable as a main aortic trunk because this model offers the possibility of identifying the origin of the coronary arteries. This is the right coronary artery. This is the left coronary artery. And when looking inside, the diagnosis becomes immediately apparent. This is a, a case of double outlet right ventricle, whereby out of the cavity of the right ventricle, both the aorta and the pulmonary artery originate. This is the classic definition of double outlet right ventricle. And even though this diagnosis can be difficult to uh, formalize based on uh, echocardiogram, the model gives an immediate and unrestricted view and understanding of the core lesion in this case. The additional lesion, which is consistent with that of double outlet right ventricle, is that of a VSD, or a communication between the two uh, ventricle or interventricular septal defect. And we can see the relation between the septum and the ventricular septal defect on the right, on the, uh, right side, as well as the left side from here. And moreover, from the top, we can look down the barrel of the two main vessels, with or without the anterior wall. In this case, I will uh, reapply the anterior wall of the right ventricle and the free wall of the left ventricle to illustrate 
the true orifice of the aorta from the right ventricle, and the pulmonary artery, which in this case overrides over the right ventricular cavity and the left ventricular cavity. And the 3D model immediately does a direct illustration of the relative position of the crest of the septum compared to the opening of the pulmonary artery. Moreover, it does illustrate the fact that, that below the plane of the uh, pulmonary valve, which is in this model not being printed, we can see a ridge of muscle that restricts the communication between the left ventricle and the pulmonary valve. And that is a piece of information that is exceedingly important when planning the operation. From a surgical point of view, by having this direct view of the uh, diagnosis in front of us, we can right now and right here devise a surgical plan. The traditional surgical plan in this case will involve closing the hole between the two uh, ventricles, closing the VSD between the two ventricles. This will assign the pulmonary artery to the left ventricle and therefore the two main vessels will have to be switched. In addition, uh, considering what the model is showing, I should probably resect some muscle underneath the pulmonary valve to um, make the passage between the left ventricle and the pulmonary artery uh, completely unobstructed. I would start by defining the size and the shape of the hole that will need to be closed during the operation. This is the size and the hole of the VSD. I would do it by di direct measurement that I can then apply to a patch to shape the patch to the exact shape and size, uh, considering that this is the shape and size of the heart as it functions. Uh, I can be very precise in um, cutting uh, a near oval patch to close the hole. We will then proceed to stitch the patch around the edges of this hole using surgical uh, sutures. So we can use a piece of implantable material here and try to reproduce the size and shape of the hole on this material and then cut it according to that. We are now proceeding to the implant of the patch and to do that I'm going to stitch the actual edges of the VSD. The material is soft, but it offers a fair amount of resistance to the passage of the needle, probably slightly more than what the uh, myocardium would, but is soft enough to uh, give the impression that uh, too much force will probably cut the stitch through. So we are now positioning the patch inside. And if I can follow on this stitch, and I can in sequence stitch the patch. Once the first two stitches are in place, it becomes easier to stabilize the um, surgical field. There is also uh, another element which is the relatively lack of uh, flexibility of this material compared to the heart. Uh, there's no elastic fibers in the model of course and that uh, obliges you to be particularly correct and true in the measurement of the defect because the sizing of the patch at that point becomes critical. Uh, the idea that uh, the material can reproduce that degree of difficulty, it, uh, it's a fantastic training tool. From a surgical point of view, I cannot think of something uh, more effective and less worrying than uh, this. Uh, you can take your time, you can redo things, you can pass a stitch again if you're not happy with it to begin with but it does illustrate, and I'll show it very quickly, uh, all the potential problems that one can find when stitching up these hearts. There you go. Anyway, the patch is in place. 
and now stitching it in place as we would do in a normal hat. As we would do during a normal operation, we, after the implant, would proceed to a meticulous inspection of the implant around the edges. As we can see here, this part of the patch is consistent with a good repair, is uh, aligned with the, with the edge of the defect. But here, there is what I would call the substrate for a residual defect. I can see it here. It is, uh, perhaps not surprisingly, in the most difficult part of the implant, but it's easy for me to spot on the model. And equally, it's easy for me to repair. So it informs me not only on the anatomy, it informs me on how the operation went for good or worse. So here we have it, a fully implanted patch on the, the 3D printed model using surgical patch and surgical stitches. I can look at this from the opening that the um, uh, septation and segmentation has provided me at the time of the print. But I can also inspect this implant from what I would consider the standard surgical approach through the right atrium. Remove the leaflet of the tricuspid valve and look at the implant of the patch from the traditional surgical procedure. And if I were to look at this during the operation, I would think this is a well implanted patch. The 3D model at the moment in the current configuration offers two types of uh, substrate uh, to surgical training. One is the ability to use uh, the real life shape of defects to allow us to size and shape the uh, template of the material that could be used then in the real life operation. In the case of closing a hole, for example, or repairing an interventricular defect, based on the model, we can actually shape and size the patch that can be used then the day after in theater to cut out, out of implantable material, the actual patch that would be used for the repair. The second um, technical advantage offered by the material in this case is that it offers a good substrate for the development of the surgical skills when it comes to needle and uh, needle holder handling, um, the direction of the pass of the needle, the strength that is needed to pass the needle through. In this regard, even though the material of the heart model does not reproduce one-to-one -one the physical characteristics of the human uh, muscle, the myocardium, it does offer some characteristics that are still extremely useful for surgical training. When you are considering that during the operation, the heart looks and behaves like an empty flat bag, uh, it is like trying to reshape, say, a bouncy castle. When the bouncy castle is completely empty and flat on the floor, you are not really sure how it will look like when it's completely inflated. You will only know the validity of your repair once you inflated the bouncy castle. This is not very different from what we're seeing here. And heart in the operating theater has to be empty of blood immobile and very soft. I can only verify the validity of my implant once the vessel is again full of blood. The fundamental effect of being able to trial out the operation on the table is the substantial increase in my confidence to obtain the very result I'm looking for and that is yet another step towards what I would consider the holy grail of surgical training, which is the total real life reproduction on your training table.